Hello. So today we're going to talk about chapter 10, which is the central nervous system. So feel free to take out some notes, uh, some paper to take some notes. Um, follow with me or follow along in the textbook if you like, and you can highlight stuff through as well. Um, I put specific sections on each PowerPoint, uh, or on the beginning of the section of the PowerPoint, and then once we jump to the next one, you'll see it there. So you kind of know where I'm at in case it's a little confusing or you need a little more info. You can go back to the textbook and, and get more information. So we'll split. Uh, I'll probably do chapter 10 and chapter 11 in one video, and then I'll probably do chapter 13 on another video. Okay, I don't want to too overwhelming. Feel free to take a break whenever you want. Um, just make sure you're, you're taking notes and, and have this through. Uh, we're about to be halfway through the semester. Well, the eight weeks or the half of the semester. Halfway through halfway. Um, so make sure you really get your information. So. There's a lot of big vocab words um, in this in this section or in these chapters, so I suggest finding the if there's a section you don't understand or a couple words you don't understand, go ahead and like pause it and, and look up those definitions for those words because they're gonna help you understand the big picture. Because um, there's a lot of words that are a little fancy that we probably don't use in our vocab every day, so it may get confusing. Okay, so let's let's start uh, with ten point one, uh, spinal cord. Uh, protection and uh, so the spinal cord um, and its spinal nerves uh, have neural pathways um, that give very 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 fast reactions um, or signals from the brain to the rest of the body okay um, uh, the vertebrae or vertebral column protects the spinal cord the spinal cord so that's all point if you remember from the skeletal muscle videos um, so your spinal cord you researched it a little bit it looks like a little like a little X, kind of like a little circle. So the, those bones protect the spinal cord. Um, and then it's made up of what we call meninges, or meninges, however you want to say, and they're just the layers of connective tissue that surround it or cover it. Uh, so the dura matter is the outermost layer, uh, the arachnoid is the middle, and the pia matter is the inside. So it's just different layers uh, that protect the spinal cord. Um, and then it has a cerebrospinal fluid Okay, so that's pretty important, and that's what circulates in between the arachnoid and the pia, kind of like in between there. So it's a little fluid that has a, a lot of different cells that are going to help uh, either in cleaning up or regenerating or just, just helping out in whatever functions there, there may be needed. So looking at a picture real quick, um, so here's our, here's our spinal cord, vertebrae, we've got the gray matter, which is a little kind of like H in the middle of butterfly, and the white matter. And then the three layers, uh, the inside is a pia, uh, the middle is the arachnoid, and then the outside is the dura matter. So this little space, subarachnoid, that's where the cerebrospinal fluid will be, will be at, uh, just moving along through there. And uh, it has different cells, it has different functions that we may talk a little bit about. Okay? So that's our overall function. Here are the nerves that are extending to the peripheries or different parts of our body. Um, and so depending on what section of the of the vertebrae you're at is the nerves that are going to be branching out of uh, from there so uh, we got a section of uh, so here's some some body some sensory body um, cells in here so these are our nerves okay um, just general info um, the length is about uh, 42 to 45 centimeters uh, they extend from the medulla oblongata so that's where the spinal cord starts Anything above that would be our brain um, to the L2 or the lumbar two section. Um, the roots, or what they call the cauda echina, and that's all the way down and go down uh, like whispers of like flowing, flowing hair. Okay, and then the cervical enlargement. So those are the, like the nerves that kind of like move to the sides. Uh, that's in the upper limbs and the lumbar enlargement. That'll be the lower limbs. Um, so here it is. Um, we got uh, all the, the sections, the C's, the T's, the L's. Uh, we got different nerves, the thoracic nerves, um, the lumbar nerves, sacral nerves, um, cervical nerves on the top. Um, then it was talking about the lumbar enlargement, so just this basically the section up to kind of like around T12. Um, so we have um, the lumbar enlar enlargement and all these nerves moving out intercostal through the ribs, um, different sections of the body, okay? Um, 
drag. So here is a kara ekina. So here, like at the end, some kind of ekina. Uh, but all right. So uh, the gray matter. Um, so remember, it's kind of like that little, that little uh, butterfly contains um, some dendrites, uh, some axons, axon terminals, neuroglia, different types of uh, of cells uh, like astrocytes, like oligodendrocytes. Um, and it's divided into different horns, so it's kind of like the top will be horn or the bottom has different horns, kind of like the little butterfly. Uh, so we have the posterior gray horns, um, that's the for the incoming sensory neurons, so sensory from the brain, and the uh, anterior gray horns, uh, which is the somatic or the body, or the, the neurons that are going to go to the body, to the muscles, to the different areas of the body. Um, the white matter has mainly myelinated axons. Um, it's organized into little columns, which we'll show you in a little bit. And then we have the sensory tracts. Sensory is ascending, always going to the brain. And motor is descending. It's coming away from the brain. Okay, So either we got to send signals up or, and we got to send receive signals from the top and send them down. So those are motor tracts and sensory tracts. Okay, so as you can see in this image, um, here's our little gray horn on the top. Um, the anterior and posterior, so here's our posterior, here's our anterior. Um, this blue, uh, typically blue will be our sensory neurons, so kind of coming from the brain, um, coming down to this uh, interneuron, kind of like uh, neurons are in between. There's some signals or some areas that do have an interneuron, Other, otherwise it would be just the sensory uh, with the motor or the somatic motor neuron, which is the red one here, and it'll go through and these are the nerves we're talking about. It'll go to whoever, wherever it has to go, whichever muscle, whatever uh, organ contraction, anything like that, that that the signal needs to go to. Okay, so here's our like a little section. Um, now here's our cell body of the sensory neuron. Um, the central canal in the middle. We got an anterior medial fissure here in the middle. Um, so goes. Right. Um, so here's another like a, a real life <laughs> uh, picture. No, no animation um, of the horns, the gray horn, the posterior and anterior. Um, so sensory neurons will go through to the brain. And these will go to the body or motor neurons. Um, anterior white columns. So it's just like these, these little lines. That's kind of what, what they look like. Okay. Here are the openings in the middle. The central canal in the middle as well. All right, so we're on section 10.2 now. So we got spinal nerves, okay? So the spinal nerves of the nerves from the spine, or the spinal cord, uh, branch um, into the peripheral nervous system with the PNS. Um, they connect the CNS or the brain and spinal cord to um, all parts of the body, the sensory receptors to the muscles, to different glands, to whatever function we need to do. There's 31 pairs of them. Uh, we won't get too into detail, but we will talk a little bit about them. Um, and each one has its, its section, and the names are due to the section they're at and their function. Okay, um, So they have different layers of connective tissue coverings as well, those nerves. Um, they are wrapped in the endoneurium, so it's also three layers again, endoneurium. So all individual ones in endoneurium, and then the groups of those, the perineurium, and then the whole nerve itself is the epineurium. So um, let's look at a picture real quick. Um, so kind of like the muscle. So the individual, so here's the axon. Remember the mind sheet. Um, then we have the endomerium that's covering one. And the perineurium that's covering a bundle of ones, um, which is called the fascicle. And then uh, the epineurium, which is the whole nerve itself, which has a lot of little bundles of axons and, and neurons, okay? And we got different blood vessels in between as well. So if you look at this picture on the left, it's kind of like a cut through that uh, that nerve, whatever nerve it is, whatever pair of nerves it is coming from. Um, and those are the layers as well. So epineurum, uh, endoneurum, perineurum, and endoneurum. Okay. So the pathway um, that we talk about, or we're going to talk about, it's uh, about the reflex arc. So it's basically... Um, when you have a, a reflex 
and how the signal goes, where the signal goes to and how it comes back. It's gonna go hard. It's gonna go up, it's gonna come down. So we're just gonna use an example of the of the knee jerk. Pretty sure you've done it in high school somewhere. Um, or just for fun. Where they hit uh, they hit you like in the, in the knee under the patella and just a little tendon right there. You're trying to get that reflex. Um, so we have a sensory receptor, sensory neuron, an integrating center, a motor neuron, and an effector. Okay. Um, so here's an image. Let me take back a little bit. Right. So here's an, an image. Um, so basically, um, you have here the sensory receptor, which is going to be here in the little, in the little muscle here, muscle spindle. So what's going to happen is once you hit this, that receptor is going to notice because we're hitting a tendon that there's some vibration or there's some movement in this muscle. So that it's going to receive that signal. Um, it's going to send it through the sensory neuron and you can send it to the brain and it's going to come down as well, connect with the motor neuron, um, back through the nerve. And then it's going to, you know, it's going to go to the muscle itself and then create that contraction of the muscle. Okay. So that's a reflex. So once you do it without, um, you knowing it, the purpose or the whole purpose of that is to know how well your, your, your signals are working or your neurons are working. Um, the signaling process to the brain and through the brain and, and through the vertebrae to the muscles to make sure that everything's good uh, with those nerves surrounding that, that area, okay? Um, so, so, yeah, so that's basically the, the pathway that, that occurs. Got a little sensory receptor to the neuron, comes up, connects to the motor neuron, and then it comes back uh, to the muscle and then makes it contract. Um, so the brain, one of the largest organs of the body, has about 85 billion neurons, so that's a lot. Um, 10 to 50 trillion neuroglia, oh my goodness. Um, so on average, each neuron forms a thousand synapses with other neurons. And the four big parts of the brain, so we're going to talk about the brain itself, are the brain stem, the diencephalon, the cerebrum, and the cerebellum. Okay, uh, the brain stem or the section of the brain stem is going to continue with the spinal cord um, and consist of the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the midbrain. Okay, so we'll look at here the images, um, the brain stem, cerebellum, diencephalum, and the cerebrum here on top, which I'm probably going to top right. Okay, um, so diencephalon is... Um, we categorize it, or it has a thalamus, a hypothalamus, and the pineal gland, which is right here. Um, got the brain stem and the cerebellum over here. So it's a cool little picture of the brain. Uh, here's a real life picture of the brain. There's a whole cerebrum. Uh, the thalamus, hypothalamus, uh, the midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata, and the spinal cord just continuing down. Um, and the cerebellum. So it's pretty cool. I just love looking at it like a real life brain. All right. Um, so, the spinal cord and the brain are protected by what they call or what they have, what we have as a cerebrospinal fluid. Okay. So, it carries oxygen, uh, glucose, chemicals to the neurons and uh, to the cells and removes waste or toxic substances. So, it's really there. It's a little fluid there. It's not just there to be there, it has a function. It's helping. Uh, clean out stuff and 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 bring or or take uh, oxygen and and different substances to the brain because we need them and we don't really our brain doesn't really store um, oxygen or glucose it needs a continuous flow of oxygen and glucose uh, to continue working effectively okay um, so it circulates through the subarachnoid space remember that in between the two layers um, and through different ventricles so there's two lateral ventricles third and a fourth ventricle. Um, the sites where it is made or produced are called the choroid plexuses, okay? So if you look at, here's the site, the choroid plexus of the lateral ventricle, right here is what makes some CSF. Uh, the choroid plexus of the third ventricle, right here as well, of the fourth ventricle, right here as well. Um, so different sections, uh, the arachnoid right here on the top, this is where uh, cerebral fluid or, or different fluids come into the brain as well. Um, 
remember the meninges of the layers, the pia, the arachnoid, and the dura. So in between uh, those two is where the CSF is at. Okay, and then there's the spinal cord. I'm sure you're probably going to be over so many pictures of brains <laughs> after this chapter, but uh, here we got um, the cerebellum right here as well, the cerebrum, uh, the midbrain, the brain stem, and all that stuff. So here's, the arrows just basically show the flow um, of that, of the CSF, just kind of moving through, just kind of moving around the brain. So here's different productions, and there's some that's, that's coming out as well, connection. All right. <clears throat> so now, uh, the brainstem um, is part of the brain between the spinal cord and the diencephalon. So it has the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the midbrain. Um, the medulla has uh, two major nuclei. Um, they regulate uh, the heartbeat and the diameter of our blood vessels, so they're pretty important. Um, and the medullary respiratory center, which has our basic breathing rhythms. Okay, so the medulla. So that's a medulla right there. Um, here's a picture of the. Um, the whole brain itself, and here's of all the different uh, nerves, cranial nerves um, that we have on, on our brain. So uh, if you see each one is a different section. So on the right is like real life, on the left is kind of like our images. Okay, that we make. But each one of these nerves has its own function, and um, and they're all super important to our <laughs> to our human body, obviously. Um, so. Um, the midbrain connects the pons to the diencephalon, um, and it has tracks called the cerebra peduncles, peduncles right here. It's right here, little tracks right here in between. Cerebra peduncles, okay. Um, oh, wrong way. Um, it contains nuclei, so it's just like a bundle of different, um, of different um, neurons or nerves. Uh, the red nuclei are reddish because they have rich blood supply. Um, they form synapses there and help coordinate muscular movements. And the nuclei of the substantia nigra, so that's what it's called, negra, black, large and dark pigmented. Uh, when you lose those neurons, and that's when people have Parkinson's disease. Okay, so it's associated with the loss of those neurons in the substantia nigra. Okay, um, so here it is. There is like a transverse, so kind of being cut like this, right? Kind of looking at the top, um, we have the reticular formation right here, uh, the cerebral peduncle uh, we got right here, uh, one of the nerves, the oculomotor nerve right here, um, nucleus, we got the red nucleus, substantia nigra. Okay, so, um, so it has all kinds of different functions, um, the different axons that are here on our cerebral peduncle. Okay. I think that word's funny, peduncle. Anyways, um, all right, so uh, what are I here? We have the particular activating system, okay? So you get a different impulse or, or a, a sense or you see something or a signal from the eyes um, and it's where it's gonna go through. You got here on the left auditory signals or impulses through the ears and different sections where those impulses are gonna go through or move through um, projections to the different parts of the brain. Um, again, uh, from the bottom we got, uh, remember, I mean, if you look at, if you think about all the peripheries and everything else in our, in our body, uh, we'll get pain from the bottom, body orientation, touch receptors, things we touch. So the signals are coming from the bottom, coming up, and they can go to the different sections of the brain, whatever, uh, wherever they need to go, depending on the function of that part of the brain, which we'll get to in a little bit, okay? Um, Major regions, so here we're going to talk about the diencephalon. Uh, major regions have the thalamus, so the hypothalamus, and the pineal gland. Um, so the thalamus uh, is the biggest relay station for sensory impulses. Um, the hypothalamus um, controls activities of the autonomic nervous system, which we'll talk in the next chapter, um, probably in like 20 minutes. Uh, it controls the pituitary gland. And produces and the production of hormones, which we'll talk about as well in the next chapter. Uh, regulates emotions, uh, regulates eating and drinking, body temperature, big one. Now with COVID, 
uh, regulates circadian rhythms and the states of consciousness. Okay, and then we have the pineal gland, uh, where it has that melatonin um, help us fall asleep, which I'm pretty tired right now because <laughs> of all the work. But it's part of the endocrine system as well because it secretes that hormone melatonin. Okay. <clears throat> So here's an image, diencephalon, the thalamus, and the hypothalamus. So here's a little thalamus right here, hypothalamus over here. Um, the cerebral cortex, fissure here in the middle, um, third ventricle in here. Um, what's really cool, if you, if you, there's a part of the chapter where it talks about CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and uh, that's accumulation of, of, of tau proteins. And if you see a, a CTE brain versus a normal brain, you'll see like different sections. Um, this one's because it's cut this way, but um, if you look at it from like the bottom and from the back, you'll see um, these 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 areas are going to be kind of like uh, deteriorated. And so you see people with CTE that have a brain of a of a 60, 70 year old when they're barely in their 20s or 30s, um, and it's due to all the blows to the head, but. Just looking at an image, that's what I was thinking of right now. Um, all right, so now the, so that was the diencephalon. Now we got the cerebellum and the cerebrum. Okay, so the cerebellum consists of two hemispheres. Um, the function of the cerebellum is uh, to compare intended movements from by the cerebral cortex with what is actually happening. Um, it receives a lot of sensory impulses from the muscles, from the tendons, from the joints. So when we're talking about that reflex arc, uh, that sensory or that signal is going to be up and coming to a sub cerebellum um, and relay this, this signal back down as well uh, to the muscles to help it contract. Um, the cerebrum contains the cerebral cortex, so that's an outer layer, um, the cerebral white matter, and the gray matter nuclei. And the function of the cerebrum is to help us with the ability to read write and speak, uh, to make calculations and compose music, to remember, to create. Okay, so that's part of the cerebrum, different functions in that area. Um, so the cerebrum has all these little folds that we see, kind of like a, these little folds all around we're going to see. They're called uh, gyri, gyri, what do you want to say? Um, and then deep grooves in between there are fissures. Now, the longitudinal fissure separates between the two halves. The central sulcus separates uh, the frontal and the parietal lobes. Uh, the precentral gyrus um, is anterior to the central sulcus, and the postcentral gyrus is posterior. And um, each cerebral hemisphere has four lobes that are named after the bones that cover them as well. So that's why it's important to go through the bones first, the frontal lobe parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe, which we have in here. Frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal, probably on the side over here, but we don't have that image yet. Uh, so here's a longitudinal fissure in the middle, um, precentral gyrus over here, uh, the central sulcus going across, the postcentral gyrus over here, um, sulcus, cerebral cortex, and here the white matter that we're talking about, middle. Uh, that compose the cerebrum, okay, and the left and right hemispheres. Right, here's another picture of the same thing, um, just to the side. Here we got our temporal lobe, which we wouldn't see on the top. All right, um, now we're going to talk about the limbic, limbic system, okay. Um, so near the upper part of the brainstem and the carpus callosum is a ring of structures. Um, it's called the limbic system or the limbic border, okay? So it's basically the emotional brain. Uh, it's the biggest role or plays the biggest role in emotions, including pain, pressure, facility, affection, and anger. So that's our limbic system, okay? So our ring of structures, of structures in the inner border, okay? So here's our, all this green is a limbic system, all the little sections, okay? Um, so it's a carpus callosum, so it's right on top of that. So that's where we, all our emotions go in there, all our emotions. Even all the stress, the anger, because we have a test this week. All right. Um, 
So here's the different areas of the cerebrum as well. Um, um, each area, we're not going to get too into detail, but each area has its own uh, job or its own function. Uh, the primary visual area, Wernicke's area, common integrator area, premotor area, uh, Broca's speech area, prefrontal cortex, the insula is like inside, the primary tasting, the taste area, um, smelling area, primary olfactory area. Okay. Um, lateralization. So the brain controls opposite sides of the body. Um, the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. The right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. Um, each hemisphere kind of has its own functions as well, or its, its biggest, uh, most important functions. The left hemisphere for spoken and written language, stats, science, reasoning. The right hemisphere, more creativity, spatial pattern recognition, and emotional content. Um, Okay, so here's a couple images of sensory pathways um, that are going through. So, for example, here on the left, um, we have receptors for touch or pressure, or proprioception or vibration. Um, the signal is going to go through and it has different. Uh, here we have our first order neurons. Um, we have nuclei of the medulla right here, midbrain. Um, and it's going to come to the top to the primary somatosensory. Uh, area of the cerebral cortex okay um, so we come to, from the right we come all the way through there's some on the left as well come all the way through to the top um, that's posterior column uh, medial lemniscus pathway and here on the right we have uh, the anterolateral so here from the left uh, the receptors come in and then go through the right through the right side of the body see how we're saying the left hemisphere controls the right the right controls the left uh, that's kind of what it's talking about, the neural pathway right here. It goes through. Signals will then go up sensory uh, through the cerebral cortex area. All right. Um, now this one's with the signals coming down from the top, from the brain, all the way down um, to the skeletal muscles or to wherever it's going to stimulate a, a, a reaction or some sort of command. That it's gonna go through. Um, okay. Now, uh, so here's a summary of the different functions of the brain or what each one does. So it's pretty cool. So it has a picture on the left and it tells you exactly where it's at. So our medulla oblongata. Okay. Um, so it has ascending sensory tracts and descending tracts. So, so um, information can go up and come from the brain as well down. Uh, Functions in consciousness and arousal. Um, the cardiovascular center uh, regulates heartbeat and the diameter of our blood vessels. And um, with the help of the pons as well, uh, regulates breathing. Um, other centers also coordinate for swallowing, vomiting, coughing, sneezing, hiccups. Um, so different cranial nerves go through there as well in the nuclei. So there are different sections here of the cranial nerves. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, and the 12. Uh, here we have the pons and the midbrain. So the pons has sensory tracts and motor tracts as well. So it has both. Um, uh, the respiratory group um, regulates breathing and also has uh, different cranial nerves or nuclei of different cranial nerves in the, in the attachment in there. Uh, we have the midbrain. Um, response to visual stimuli, it's kind of like the eyes of what we see. Uh, coordinate movements of the head, the eyes, and the trunk. Response to what we hear. And the uh, substantia nigra and the red nucleus help control movement as well. And only the cranial nerves third and fourth will be in there, or nuclei of those. So we have our hypothalamus at the bottom, thalamus in the middle, and pineal gland on the top. Um, so the hypo, which I'll go in that order, uh, controls activities of the autonomic nervous system, the pituitary gland, which we'll learn also a little more later on. Regulates some emotional behavioral patterns, circadian rhythms, controls our body temperature, eating, drinking behavior, um, helps maintain a, walk, a waking state so you're awake and uh, establishes also patterns to go to sleep. Uh, the thalamus um, relays 
relays. So a lot of that uh, sensory input info is going to go through the cerebral cortex, through the thalamus, um, contributes to motor functions um, by sending info down um, to the motor areas, and then also plays a role in consciousness. And then uh, the pineal gland is mainly secreting the hormone melatonin, which helps us go to sleep. All right, uh, we got the cerebellum here. Um, smooths and coordinates contractions of the skeletal muscles. So every time we got something that the skeletal muscle needs to do, or some sensory information, it's going to come here and be relayed down to, to either continue or do something about it or send a signal to, to start a new action. Um, it also may have wrong cognition and language processing and sensory controls or um, coordinates uh, skeletal muscles are also going to coordinate or regulate posture and balance as well, which makes sense. Uh, we got the whole cerebrum here at the top. Um, perception, uh, sensory info, uh, motor areas control voluntary movements, uh, association areas we deal with more complex functions like memory, personality traits, or intelligence. Um, basal nuclei help uh, with movements. Either initiate them or terminate them or suppress them and regulate the muscle tone. And then uh, the limbic system, which we talked about here, is where our, our emotions are going to be at as well. Now, we've got the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Okay? Um, they're part also of the PNS. The cranial nerves are designated with Roman numerals. Now they emerge from the nose. Cranial nerve one, the eyes, the inner ear, the brain stem, uh, the brain stem, and the spinal cord. Okay, um, so three cranial nerves have only sensory neurons. That's why they're called sensory nerves. So sensory is going to the brain. Uh, five cranial nerves contain only motor neurons. So they leave the brain stem, and that's why they're called motor neurons, um, going into the, the rest of the body. And then the other four uh, cranial nerves are mixed because they have both sensory and motor neurons coming through them, okay? So quick summary of, of both. We got, um, of, of all of the nerves, we got the olfactory nerve, number one. Um, so it has actions in the linings of the nose. Its main function is for smell. The optic nerve is for vision, the tina of the eye, optic. Uh, the oculomotor, uh, movement of the eyelid and the eyeball um, alter the shape of vision as well con constricts the pupil um, so stimulates the muscles of the upper eyelid and muscles that move our eye eyelids or eyeballs um, accents of the parasympathetic neurons as well going through this to the smooth muscles um, and the sphincter muscle of the iris think it's smaller that's a trochlear nerve. Uh, it's also a movement of the eyeball. So it has uh, somatic motor neurons that stimulate the superior oblique muscles. We got the trigeminal nerve. So we got the sensory part and the motor part. One goes up, one goes down. Okay, uh, the trigeminal uh, function is for touch, with pain, temperature, uh, muscle sense. Um, that's the sensory part, part of the brain. The motor part could be chewing. Um, stimulate the muscles used in chewing well um, so remember it's split it between what's on top and what's at the bottom uh, abducens nerve now uh, that's movement of the eyeball as well uh, stimulate the lateral rectus muscles the facial nerve um, the sensory part so it's also going to have two of them sensory and motor um, taste buds on the tongue so taste uh, touch pain temperature sensations and the motor part, um, secretion of tears, saliva, uh, stimulate the muscles of the scalp, the face of the neck, parasympathetic axons that stimulate tears, which we'll talk in the next chapter. Uh, vestibular cochlear, uh, and that has to do with equilibrium and hearing. So the motor part is hearing, um, the, the, the sensory part uh, has to deal with equilibrium okay so keeping balance um, okay the glossopharyngeal nerve 
Um, that one functions, so it has also sensory and motor part. Sensory part, taste, and some uh, sensations or normal sensations like touch, pain, temperature, um, proprioceptions, swallowing muscles, blood pressure, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Um, so this one's got a lot going on here. The glossopharyngeal nerve. And then uh, the motor part uh, has to deal with, deals with swallowing, speech, saliva. So we got uh, motor neurons that stimulate the swallowing muscles in the throat. And they stimulate that salivary gland to release saliva as well. We got the vagus nerve. Um, taste and somatic sensations. Touch, pain, temperature. Uh, from pharynx and the epiglottis, so blood pressure as well, oxygen, carbon dioxide uh, in blood to regulate breathing, visceral organs of the body, the thorax, um, that's the sensory part. The motor part, uh, it's also with swallowing, coughing, voice production, smooth muscle contraction, relaxation in the organs, the heart rate, digestive fluids, and all those things. So. Um, that's our motor part, sensory part. We got the accessory nerve. Um, so that's a motor nerve and uh, accents uh, movement of the head and the shoulders. So I'll do that right now. Mm -hmm. Stimulates the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles of the throat and the neck. Um, and we send those signals, which I'm doing right now. And the hypoglossal nerve, which is also a motor nerve. Movement of the tongue during speech and swallowing. Okay, so um, those are our nerves. Um, talk a little bit about the brain. So make sure you dig in a little deeper. Uh, try to read it, get a little more information from the textbook, and uh, and just to get more of, of the functions of each part of the brain, what they do, and and what purpose they serve. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and pause this video. And uh, I'll make another one for the other two sections. So feel free to take a break. Good job. We're almost there.